we had been together our whole life. We never skipped a beat. It was so natural. And we were excited and we were in love. We didn't realize until a little bit later that our marriage was, it was superficial and it was founded on a You're listening to Get Your Marriage On, the fun and spicy podcast, bringing you new tools and fresh ideas so that you can be the sexiest couple you know. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Get Your Marriage On. Today, I'm pleased to have as my guests Jessica and Sean Weeks. Jessica and Sean have a podcast and a workshop and an amazing blog called The Confident Marriage, and they've been through a whole lot. So I'm excited to have you two on today and to hear about your story and the amazing tools and resources you offer. Thank you, Dan. It's good to be here. Yeah, thank you. We're excited so to be here. I know a little about your story. You've, you've two been through a whole lot, probably um, more than most couples go through. But can, just for the benefit of our audience, can you introduce yourselves a little bit and your background and your story? Sure. So Jessica and I have known each other since we were young. Um, we were in our teens and we always had a connection, but it never really solidified into anything. And we kind of went our separate ways throughout our life. Uh, she was doing her thing. I was doing my thing. We would see each other casually. I was friends with her family. Um, mm-hmm. So we saw each other at events, but never really acted on that love. Uh, Except for the time I smashed eggs on your head. Yeah, she did. She mm-hmm. crushed on me so hard that she crushed eggs on my head. Mm-hmm. So um, it was about 15 years later uh, from when we first met that we saw each other at a New Year's Eve party in 2013, and it was like magic. There was uh, incredible connection, and we both immediately knew that we wanted to spend our life together. Yeah, absolutely. It was incredible. It was like we had been together our whole life. We never skipped a beat. It was so natural, and we were excited, and we were in love. We didn't realize until a little bit later that our marriage was, it was superficial and it was mm-hmm. founded on a lot of dishonesty. Mm-hmm. And more about that. Like, what do you mean by superficial marriage or dishonesty? Okay, so it took a turn about a year after we were married. So uh, we'd been married and doing our thing. Uh, about a year into that, it took a terrifying turn. Uh, I had told Jessica that I'd been clean from drugs and alcohol and didn't use pornography and... Uh, she didn't know that I was still struggling with those things. I brought in a lot of the toxic behaviors that came with those uh, lies, betrayal, emotional immaturity. And there was a real fear in me of Jessica knowing who I really was. And that caused me to pretend to be the person that I wanted to be for her instead of showing my true self. How'd that affect you, Jessica? It was difficult. It was, I I had come from an abusive childhood and a previous marriage that um, had a lot of the same things go on. Um, So I ended up going through a a period of PTSD. Well, PTSD doesn't really go away, but it it really did traumatize me. And it was difficult when I discovered his secrets and lies. Um, It was about two years of trickling this stuff out and it was pretty traumatic. It was hard to to try and figure out, do I want to stay in the marriage? Do I want to go? How, how do we ever get past this? And it just, it felt like an, a complete hurricane. And so I, I was trying to deal with the PTSD. He was trying to find a way to find himself and to be honest and to get clean. But during that time, there was no trust. There was no safety for either one of us. It was completely just insecure. And I realized that the whole relationship before was just really founded on, on somebody I, I didn't know. And that was really scary. Mm-hmm. Do so, you think to a degree, all of us, when we get married, have a little bit of a fantasy that uh, this is going to be blessed. This person is perfect or perfect for me and nothing's going to stop us. Like oh. I think every couple has that fantasy, right? Of course you have, you get into it, having the marriage that you want and that you think it's going to be, Mm -hmm. and you have an idea of what, who the person is or who you think they are. And when you start doing life together, you find out that some of those things kind of break down and weren't quite where you thought they were going to be Yeah. sometimes more traumatically than others. Yeah. And there's, there's a process to it. There's, there's psychology behind it actually. So in, in understanding people and human behavior, Um, naturally our instinct unconsciously is to find a mate and to find the best mate we can. And by doing that, it's almost like a peacock that shows its beautiful feathers. 
and you know flaps them for the females they're trying to woo them they're right? trying to woo them we as human beings do the same thing just with our personality traits and our behaviors and so what we do is we put on our best game face and show our best traits and even emphasize our best traits and recess and hold down our negative traits as to we don't want to scare the person away we don't want them to think poorly of us or walk away um, naturally we all want to be loved and we all want connection. And so there's a psychology behind why we do it. And it's not a bad thing and it doesn't make us bad. We're just people. Um, in his case, because of the drugs and the addiction history, it was a bit more intense. Mm -hmm. um, usually it's not quite that bad. Um, most couples go through stages, which I talk about one of my podcasts and I won't bore you guys here with it. If you want to hear it, you can listen. But there are stages to a relationship and it's usually about the sixth or seventh year that people actually really know you and you're not you're not able to hide things anymore and the feathers go away mm -hmm. <laughs> you're just left with the bald peacock and i'll be sorry <laughs> wow. uh, why did it take sean why do you think couples in general like have a hard time like you mentioned it to like took two years to kind of trickle mm -hmm. everything out mm -hmm. why why do you think most couples or more most individuals behave that way in similar situations why not just rip the bandaid off and like disclose it all. Well, Wouldn't that be awesome? It would be. Um, mm -hmm. I think that, I think that with human nature, it's, uh, it's kind of a, a developed thing that we have to kind of hide our true self and present this face forward to society, uh, mm -hmm. emphasizing the best of us and kind of crushing down those things that we're, uh, there's a fear involved that people won't really like you if they know who you really are. Mm -hmm. So if they know just the good things about you, they're more likely to accept you and to like you. And when it comes to relationships, there's so much more fear involved because you're trying to build a life with someone. And I know for me, there was a real fear that if she knew all the bad things about me, all the shameful things about me, there's no way she would have wanted to be with me or love me. And mm -hmm. I think that all couples go through that, even if they don't have those deep shameful things, they're just, there's a kind of inbred insecurity in people about, about the qualities that they deem are not good qualities. Mm -hmm. But what happens if you prolong hiding those things that ought to be disclosed or ought to be shared? You want to take this one? They'll eventually be seen. You'll eventually be known for who you are, no matter mm -hmm. how long you try, how hard you try to hide it. Cause we can only do that for so long. And if, if you really think back to your life history and, and previous relationships, eventually we start seeing people for who they are. And that's because we can't, they leak. They, they kind of show a little bit here and there. Even if we get glimpses of them, we still see them. And so we're not able to keep up this, uh, this clown suit, this facade. 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 I, I don't know where I was going with that, but this facade of ourselves. And so eventually your spouse is going to know who you are and they're, they're going to know those things about you. And so it's, it's really important that, you know, when, when you're thinking about being with someone long-term to really allow yourself to be known and seen, because it's really going to save both of you so much grief and anger mm -hmm. later. And quite honestly, I say, if, if you really want a true love, what better way than to have a true love with someone who really knows who you are and you're never scared that they're going to leave you when they find out who you are. And that is pure and amazing. Mm -hmm. There is a little bit of risk there, huh? If you do yeah. tell them all, they might not like you anymore or they might not like this part of you and you might risk it. And I think that applies not just to like uh, a past of, or, you know, struggles with pornography or drug use or whatever. It's, it's, um, it's like our desires, the things mm -hmm. we want in life, all of those things, even if you might be contrary to what you think your partner wants, but like right. really opening up your heart is really the foundation for intimacy. Intimacy is scary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to be vulnerable to be yes. intimate. And no one wants to be vulnerable with another person. No. no, but when you do, oh, wonderful things happen. What mm -hmm. you're telling me reminds me of a story that a therapist told me. She's helping this couple, a husband's uh, been involved in pornography uh, for a long time in their marriage. And he would always like, you know, just to make his wife happy, like, I'm going to stop. I'm not doing it anymore. But it was just lip service. He'd keep returning to this habit. And the therapist told him, why do you, why, why don't you just go up there and just tell your wife, look, I look at porn. 
I tell you I'm going to change, but I'm not going to change. And I'm a liar. <laughs> it's like, I can't say that. <laughs> it's like, well, why not? Because that would be too honest. <laughs> <laughs> she already knows it just just be honest with her there's there's some magic about being honest and then letting her deal with the consequences of whatever that is but at least be honest mm -hmm. absolutely you've nailed it right on the head i love that story uh tell me about um your journey working with therapists are there good therapists bad ther are all therapists created equally tell me your experience there no they're people so they're all across the board so we went to some therapists where some of the things they told us to do was i had one therapist uh so we were going and trying to deal with some of the honesty issues i had and and he actually told tried to tell us that it would be okay that i should lie to my wife if i'm using porn because it's not really going to hurt her and we were like what and then the? it was none of my business so we're like, I don't think you understand why we're here. <laughs> and I had one therapist literally uh, scoot forward in her chair and get in my face and yell at me at the top of her lungs. That we had to get, that she had to get over it. And... I had to get over it. And um, I, I, you know, yeah, we were told we were hopeless by everybody around us. That but there was no way we, we did could see, make it. We did see some really, really good we therapists did. too. And there are some amazing therapists out there. So um, what makes it different? They gave us some tangible things to do. So we found that in going to therapists, we were talking a lot mm -hmm. and we were getting some great like personal insight into some of our uh, deep problems and deep things going on inside of us. But we left thinking, okay, that's great. Now I know this about myself, but what do I do about it? They weren't yeah. giving us anything to do. So like I think there's an action plan. Right, right, right. So I think the really great therapists we had, we left feeling like we had a plan and something tangible to do about it because it's one thing to know about the problems, but then it's like, okay, now we need to move on to the next step. What do we do now? And sometimes, I mean, just like, let's say you have a business and you're inter interviewing people as employees, you need to do the same thing with therapists. Find someone that mm -hmm. both you and your spouse, if you're going together as a team, you connect with and it feels right because I think we fell into the idea that because they're a therapist and they're educated, that that means that it would be a good fit regardless mm -hmm. and that, all of them were pretty much going to be cookie cutter same. And that's not, that's not true. Actually personality and the way that you connect with the therapist and how comfortable you feel with them is really important. So through everything you've learned, you've created these two amazing programs, one for building a marriage built with full of confidence and other to help uh, couples that went through the awful hell that you went through and recovering from that like PTSD experience. Can you tell me about what makes a confident marriage? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, well, go ahead. Through, through all of this, we have done so much research and we've spent so much time really looking into it. And it's how I discovered my love for psychology. So I decided that I was going to go back to school and get my master's and become a licensed marriage and family therapist. And so Sean and I together through my education and our research and our trial and error, our horrible trial and error experience, mm -hmm. we did put together two systems. And I'll let Sean take it from system one. Yeah, and everything that we talk about is is based in real world experience, things that actually happened to us, trial and error, things that we actually used and uh, exhaustive, exhaustive research because we're the kind of people who like to dive in and learn everything about it so that we can understand it. So uh, the first system, and, and it goes for any marriage, mm -hmm. is uh, so we believe that there's a foundation to that marriage, that confident marriage. And there's four cornerstones to that foundation. You can't have a healthy, confident marriage without a strong foundation underneath it. So the first and most important cornerstone is honesty. And that involves being completely honest with yourself and completely honest with your spouse. Mm -hmm. So you have to be honest with yourself so that you can truly know yourself. And then you have to be honest with your spouse so that they can truly know you mm -hmm. and you in turn have to accept their honesty about themselves so that you can truly know them because that's what unlocks the door to intimacy, mm -hmm. right? So the next step would be intentionality mm -hmm. and that involves uh, how you love someone, making those choices to love them throughout the day, every day consistently, and also being intentional in the way you grow yourself as a person and how you live your life. It's a series of conscious choices leading towards a goal um, admiration is the one of the other cornerstones and admiring your spouse is so important letting them know how much you love them letting you know letting them know how much you appreciate about them and that includes the physical and emotional intimacy right mm -hmm. because what better way to admire your spouse than to be vulnerable with them and to be physically intimate with them mm -hmm. 
um, the, the last cornerstone is expectations. And I know they say don't have expectations, but in, in that we, we're talking about the healthy and the unhealthy expectations. So having expectations of yourself and how you're going to carry yourself, what you expect from your spouse in your marriage and that you and your partner have mutually agreed on those things. But, and then there's the unhealthy expectations that you shouldn't be having. Mm-hmm. So if you can get those four cornerstones down, you have the foundation to have a confident marriage. A healthy, confident healthy, marriage. Healthy, confident mm-hmm. marriage. Can we summarize those again? Uh, honesty. Honesty. Intentionality, admiration, and expectations. Mm-hmm. Those are fantastic. So on this podcast, we like to talk a lot about sex as well as, as part of intimacy, because that's kind of like the stage in which you play out your, your marriage mm-hmm. and the intimacy of your, of your relationship. Mm-hmm. How does having a confident marriage or how, how do these things affect your sex life? Oh my gosh. It, it's like yeah. night and day when so, it comes to intimacy. Sex doesn't start with you and your partner's bodies. The it, sex starts no. way back in here. <laughs> and, you know, it's that honesty that's the facilitator for that emotional intimacy that then leads to physical intimacy like you wouldn't believe. So when you're not holding back and when, when you're fully known and your spouse is fully known, you're you're able to open up a whole new world, not just emotionally but physically mm-hmm. and it really changes the whole dynamic of your sexual experience with your spouse in an amazing way we thought we had one of our connections was physical connection mm-hmm. in the beginning of our marriage man did i not know that it could get so much better mm-hmm. when you're able to have that that foundation that that honesty that realness with someone it mm-hmm. it definitely opens the doors for amazing intimacy yeah. in your marriage if people want to find out more about your programs or what you offer, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? Um, our website is like our hub. Everything's on there, mm-hmm. www.theconfidentmarriage.com. Our social links are on there. You can email me through there. Our podcasts and blogs are on there, everything. Yeah, links for the mentorship program mm-hmm. and information about our workshops mm-hmm. and uh, all the social media. Yeah, we're, we, we probably use Instagram more than anything. What are, what are we on Instagram? At Confident Marriage. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Thanks for being on today. Thank sure, you for having thank us. Thank you for Dan. having we us, Dan. Mm-hmm. We hope that you enjoyed this episode of Get Your Marriage On. And if you did, we would love it if you would take a few seconds to give us a rating on iTunes and to share the show with your friends. They'll thank you for life. Once you've done that, you can head over to GetYourMarriageOn.com for more resources about today's topic and to download our amazing marriage apps. Now go get your marriage on.